in the previous two uh, videos, we talked about some of the thermodynamic constraints. Those are thermodynamic laws that imposes intrinsic constraints on any kind of a energy conversion or energy transform systems. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the forces, the forces that's, that's acting upon the wind turbine. In particular, we're going to talk about uh, the drag force and uh, the lift force, and we're going to talk about different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, different types of uh, wind turbines. Uh, the name wind turbine is a relatively new terminology and is used to refer to the machines uh, that convert wind energy into electricity. But before the invention of modern wind turbines, windmills have been used and perfected for thousands of years to convert wind energy into mechanical energy for grinding grains, pumping water, um, and many other purposes. Even before the invention of um, windmills, water mills had been used for centuries. The earliest documented water, water mill is the uh, Paracora, Paracora wheel. This is a, uh, the Paracora wheel is from Greece in 3rd century BC, and this is, a, this is a picture of the replica. The idea of the water mill is relatively straightforward, and it's illustrated quite nicely in this very ancient graph. Um, so basically, uh, the water coming out of the uh, pipe uh, pushes on the teeth that's sort of fixed uh, on the surroundings of this turning wheel, and in this uh, in this replica, it's uh, small cups, small cups, that's kind of fixed on the turning wheel, and uh, uh, the turning wheel has a horizontal rotation axis, and uh, produce rotational motion that drives a shaft. At every instance of time, if you pay attention to uh, the motion, at every instance of the time the velocity of the teeth or the velocity of the cup is actually consistent. It's actually in the same direction of the flow of the water. Um, it's act it, act it actually has quite important implications and we're going to talk about um, uh, the differences between drag forces and lift forces and we're going to understand the force that's kind of a in the direction of the flow is actually the drag force though. So the so water the water mill is actually driven by the drag. The idea behind the earliest windmill, which was discovered in the Middle East, Middle East in Iran actually, right? This is the earliest uh, windmill, per Persian windmill, 500 to 900 AD actually. Um, the idea behind this kind of a windmill is actually quite similar to that of the water mill. So unlike water, which actually flows downward, wind usually blows horizontally. So the earliest windmill has a design that is actually quite similar to the water mill with its rotation axis just turned vertical. So the force from horizontally blowing wind pushes on those large wooden blades and rotates the shaft. So here is the cross-section view of this uh, wind turbine, a uh, windmill actually, windmill, and that's the vertical rotation axis. And then if we actually look from top down, this is top-down view, and that's the location of the shaft. And then those are the different blades. Those are the different blades. Um, so from this top-down view, we can see that uh, half of the blade at every instance of time, half of the blades half of the old blades are actually shielded from the wind. So you have a cover here that actually blocks the wind from coming in. The wind only can actually come in from this, uh, this particular opening. right? So at every instance of time, half of the blades are actually shielded from the wind. Only half of the other half of the blades are actually uh, having any kind of effect. So the force from horizontally blowing wind um, the wind only blows on half the blades and the velocity and the velocity of the blades are more or less in the same direction as the airflow basically and that's sort of the earliest uh, um, 
the earliest windmill. And later on, the Crusaders brought the idea of windmills from the Middle East to Europe. The earliest documented Europe, European designs was from about 1270 AD. One important difference between the earliest European design and the earliest Middle East windmills is that the rotational axis is not vertical anymore. It's actually horizontal. So if you look at those uh, examples of uh, European windmills, the blades is actually rotating in this way, and uh, the rotational axis is actually horizontal, more or less. Right? It's not like a vertical axis. Right? It may have uh, some slight angle that's kind of slightly tilted upwards or something, but uh, more or less the, the rotational axis is, uh, is, uh, is horizontal. Right. And the blades actually, the rotating blades actually cuts into the wind. So the flow of the wind is actually perpendicular to the rotation of the blades, to the direction of the rotation of the blades. So, so later on, later on, uh, we will discuss that the, the horizontal axis design actually has a uh, much higher energy conversion efficiency uh, than the vertical axis design that we saw earlier. Um, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in those uh, those designs in the, in, the, in, the, in the Middle East. In particular, we will talk about differences between drag-based windmills and lift-based windmills. The European windmills have been uh, improved immensely over the centuries. Uh, for example, uh, the sails the sails may have an open lattice structure, open lattice structure. Um, uh, this, this structure is used to create turbulences that can act as a brake force during a damaging, a damagingly high wind speeds. Those open lattices can be uh, covered with the cloth, with cloth in this case, right? Can be covered with cloth um, in order to actually create more lift during low wind speeds. And uh, on some of the windmills, you might see a open slot. There's an open slot just behind the leading edge of the blade. This open slot can reduce the possibility of stall when the angle of attack is high. And many of those innovations were brought by uh, Dutch and English. And uh, some of the similar concepts are still being used in modern wind, uh, wind turbines. So what exactly is the force that turns the blades on a horizontal axis, windmill or wind turbine. The, the exact shape of the wind turbine blade is actually quite complicated. To simplify our discussion for now, let's consider just a flat plate. Let's just consider a flat plate, this kind of rectangular flat plate, with a very smooth surface. Let's assume that the surface of the plate is kind of very, very smooth. So. The force that turns the blades of the vertical axis windmill is relatively straightforward. So wind, if the wind is actually blowing in this direction, it blows perpendicular to the blade. And it's the push force from the wind that turns the blade. So in aerodynamics, this force, which has a direction that's actually in the same direction, that's, that's actually parallel, par parallel to the flow direction, is called a drag. It's a name used uh, quite widely in aerodynamics. That's for a, a blade that's kind of perpendicular, placed per perpendicular to the flow direction of the wind. If we tilt the plate by a small angle like that, the situation becomes slightly more complicated. If we assume the wind still actually flows uh, horizontally, the wind still flows hori uh, blows horizontally like that, then the airflow can be partitioned into a component that is actually parallel to the plate and a component that's perpendicular to the plate. Um, the parallel component of the airflow, this kind of component, it's not going to generate any kind of push force on the front of the plate, right? Because it's going actually parallel to the front surface. It's only going to generate the friction. And 
if we assume that the plate surface is very very smooth, then the friction is um, can be ignored. So only the perpendicular flow, only the perpendicular flow to the front surface that can actually generate any kind of a push. So this force can uh, this this uh, this kind of a perpendicular flow is going to generate a force that's kind of perpendicular to the uh, tilted uh, plate, right? And this force can again be partitioned into two components, and one component is parallel parallel to the wind direction, and the other force, the other component is perpendicular to the wind direction, and this component that's parallel to the wind is called a drag, and this force that's kind of perpendicular to the wind is called a lift. So, um, so this kind of tilted smooth plate acts almost like a force filter, which filters out the force component that is uh, parallel to the plate, and only keeps the component that is uh, perpendicular to the plate. But how exactly does the rotation happen in 3D space? Now let's consider this uh, 3D object that resembles a section of the windmill blade which is, which is attached to, sh to a shaft. Uh, the wind blows along the shaft in the direction of the shaft. So this is a sort of a perspective view, and this is a top-down view, right? We're looking down on the mast. This is a top-down view. Okay. So the wind is actually blowing horizontally in this direction, right? And the sail, this sail, this kind of a flat plate sail, has an angle, right? That's tilted inside of the wind flow. Right? The situation is exactly the same as this kind of a uh, this kind of tilted plate in the wind. So we know that this wind is going to generate a force on the sail that's perpendicular to uh, the sail, to the direction of the sail, right? And this force on the sail can be partitioned into a component that's uh, parallel to the wind direction and a component that's... Um, so this is actually the drag force and a component that's perpendicular to the wind direction. That's the the, 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 uh, that's the lift force, and here it's called a turning force, but it's actually the lift force. So now you have a a a, a lift force generated by the sail, and then what's going to be the effect of this turning force on this kind of three-dimensional object, right? If we take a front view, if we take a front view, we are looking in the direction of the wind, basically. So that's the sail, and that's the shaft. Right, and that's the mask. That's the mast, right? If we take a front view in the direction of the wind, then this turning force goes this way, right? Because this sail, this sail, is attached at a certain distance away from the shaft, from the rota rotation center, right? So the turning force also acts at a location that's kind of a that's, that's, that's at a distance away from the rotating shaft. And because of this distance, this turning force actually creates a torque. A torque is basically a force times uh, the length of the radius of the, of the, of the, of the rotation. So, if we... So, on modern wind turbines, um, the blades are not made of exactly flat plates. So this is a blow-up view of a of the blades on a modern wind turbine. Right? The cross section of a particular blade usually has a shape of an airfoil. This kind of shape is called an airfoil. The shape of the airfoil are designed such that the lift can be maximized and the drag can be minimized. And we will discuss more details about the air voice in later view videos. Uh, the majority of modern horizontal axis wind turbines operate based on the lift force. 
based on the lift force. Um, there are two major types of vertical axis uh, wind turbines. One is the so-called uh, Darius wind turbine. It looks like that. It also operates based on the lift force. In fact, if you take a look at the, the cross section, if you look at the, the cross section of its um, of its curved uh, blades, uh, you'll, you'll find the the shape of an airfoil. So, so the Darius wind turbine also operates based on the lift force. Um, and the, the other major type of vertical axis wind turbine is the so-called uh, Savonius wind turbine, or Savonius, uh, Savonius wind, wind turbine. This type, of, this type of wind turbine operates based on drag, based on drag force. And the shape of this type of wind turbine looks like two half cylinders attached together with um, with a certain amount of offset right, along the along the diagonal so so from the from the top down view from the top down view uh, we can understand how it works uh, in one kind of design this is one kind of design basically that's one of the uh, half cylinders that's the other half of the cylinder right um, so if if um, if the two half cylinders are connected at uh, the end point, then uh, it gives you a concave half circle uh, below a convex half circle. Right? If the wind blows from the left, the concave half will capture more airflow than the convex half. So there will be a net force there will be a net force that's going to try to rotate the wind turbine in the uh, counterclockwise direction. Um, in another kind of design, so this is the one half circle, this is another half uh, cylinder, these two half cylinders, but this time um, they are not at attached at the end point, but uh, they have a slight offset. So, um, you have a you ha if you have some kind of gap at this kind of location, right? Um, the, the some of the airflow, some of the airflow that's captured by the lower uh, half cylinder is going to be uh, leaked through this gap, and uh, uh, it's going to leak. It's going to be leaked through this gap into this uh, convex half circle in the inner side of this uh, convex uh, half cylinder, and it's going to create some kind of a, a counterbalance to the to the to the force that's actually trying to push this uh, convex uh, half cylinder, right? and it's going to further reduce further reduce the net force that's acting on this particular half cylinder. So 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 this kind of gap is going to actually increase the pressure difference on the two half cylinders and uh, thereby generating a uh, larger torque and in the next video we will discuss the energy conversion efficiency of the wind turbines based on lift and those based on drag and find out which type is um, more efficient <laughs>